Hello wonderful people and welcome to my diary of a bisexual guy. My name is Mark and I'm making this diary unedited just about my life as a bisexual guy, a, a bisexual person and I hope that my honesty will help other people to relate and feel less alone. So my week um, has been okay, lots of things going on and um, you'll see that I'm wearing my pink nail varnish. Um, I started wearing nail varnish uh, about a year ago. I never thought that I would wear it, but something just came to me and I really wanted to wear it. Um, and I love wearing it. I've started wearing it now, kind of at the weekend a lot of the time, and it makes me feel proud. And I really love the pink color. One of the things that I'm doing at the moment is seeing whether I can wear it to work. <laughs> um, I have an office job and I managed to wear it on a work Zoom call, like a Teams call. And uh, I kind of, you know, put my, I look like this a little bit. And one of my colleagues clocked it and it was really sweet. She was like, she was messaging me being like, love the nails. And I told her that meant a lot to me. I'm still not kind of brave enough to wear it into the office, which is interesting because, you know, what world do we live in where <laughs> certain gender can't like put a color on their nails and, and other genders can. But you know, with all these things, it's just your own time, isn't it? So I'm not pushing it. I'm just enjoying wearing it today and seeing what happens. So at the weekend, I went to Trans and Intersex Pride. Uh, I see on my Instagram and things, uh, my videos from that. Um, I love this because it's a smaller pride from the main parade. Uh, and we really get together to kind of protest the ongoing discrimination and hostile legislation against the trans community. Um, I have a particular connection to the trans community because most trans people are bi and not a lot of people know that. Um, but if you're a trans person, then the most likely orientation for you is bi or multisexual. Uh, and that kind of makes sense if you think about, you know, if you've transitioned genders, then it's, it's quite likely that you have an orientation that kind of encompasses more of a spectrum of genders rather than just monosexual. Um, I had a really, really good time. I get very tired at these events. Um, I love them. I love being able to dress in the way that I want. I love wearing like my kind of LGBT t-shirts. I have like a big flagpole and stuff. And I just love it um, because you're surrounded by your community. Um, but I do get very tired. I experience chronic fatigue, uh, which has come from a lifetime of being queer and also having to repress my sexuality for about 30 years. That has a big impact on the nervous system. And I struggled with chronic fatigue for most of my life, like since being a teenager. Uh, it's all that repressed emotion, all of that repression inside yourself, never quite being free, never quite being relaxed, always being slightly on edge over time makes your body exhausted. And that's what happened to me. So although I've recovered a lot from that, I still experience it. Um, the other thing that I experienced was PTSD once again. I am of the opinion that probably 99% of LGBT people have some form of PTSD because just the way that we're brought up, the way we have to repress and hide and fear, you know, particularly people like bisexual people, asexual people, trans people, you know, we have to be confused about it. We have to question it. There's no education. There's no support. A lot of the time, and so th that that is actually something which can cause PTSD because you're always on edge, you're always in fight or flight, 
and your body then doesn't even need like doesn't know how to get out of that state you know my body has been locked in fight or flight by being a bisexual person for my whole life and even now that i'm out and things are better the body remembers you know and it finds it very very hard to get out so uh i struggled with the crowds i struggled with just the overwhelm uh, but i was with some amazing people um amazing friends that i have i find that the queer community is very mental health aware because we have to be <laughs> And so they really, really helped me out and kind of helped me to get settled and like hugged me and oh, it was so nice. Um, another thing which came up was that I saw uh, <laughs> my couple crush. Um, if, if you're watching this video, I'm not saying like, I'm not coming on to you, but I just think you're beautiful. And I told them this, um, it is a, I mean, I'm not even quite sure exactly what terminology they use, but it is a couple and uh, they are both non-binary. Um, one is a trans man, um, the other is a non-binary, um, I guess, film presenting. Um, I, they're basically so beautiful. Um, and ah, I just got so much panic. They were there, they were looking amazing. And I bumped into them a number of times and uh, they were like, oh, we'd love to meet for coffee and stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're just so beautiful. So I, get, <laughs> I had a little like by panic. Um, sometimes I might call it pan panic because that sounds fun anyway. Um, but yeah, I experienced that and then the other thing was that I was there with my bi mommy, mommy, um, whose name is Ima, shout out to Ima. Uh, we have obviously a tradition of um, queer family, chosen family in the community. And when I came to Dublin just over a year ago, I was a little bit lost, didn't really know anyone. Um, and Ima uh, is a bi woman and she has a husband and kids and a girlfriend as well and they are absolutely wonderful she came to her bisexuality later in life um, and she basically goes around to all of the pride events with a big t-shirt saying mummy hugs and sunscreen um, and so anybody who wants a hug or sunscreen will get that from Ima it's so funny, she'll go around to all of the, the younger members of the community being like, have you got sunscreen on? You're getting burnt to a crisp. That was a terrible Irish accent. I'm really, really bad at the Irish accent. I want I want to do better, uh, but she's hysterical and she gave me loads of hugs and we had some lunch after and it was just so nice. It was so nice, it was so nice. Um, and the final thing, I guess, about this week is that I have been coming off anti-anxiety medication. I was having a bit of a pickle last year. And when I say having a pickle, that's a polite British way of saying <laughs> my mental health was going absolutely crazy and I was very unwell. Um, so I went on SSRIs, um, sertraline, um, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which is really hard to say fast. And uh, they were good for me. You know, they were good. They were good. They got me out of that period, that time. Um, and, you know, fair play to them. But I've been coming off them for like uh, nine days now. Uh, I tapered off. And it's been feeling really, really good. Uh, it's been feeling really, really good. So I'm pleased with that. Um, and we're just seeing what happened. One of the things which happened was that it affects your libido and your sexual kind of function. This is really difficult for me because, because as a bi person, we often obsess about our attractions, right? So it's like, oh, there's a girl, am I attracted to her? Oh, there's a guy, am I attracted to him, right? 
am I aroused by this or am I aroused by that? You know, am I attracted to this or that? Or like, which one am I attracted to more? You know, and there's the bi cycle and all of that. So when the medication started to artificially kind of mess with my uh, sexuality, I guess you could say, um, I found that really difficult. Um, it's still really difficult uh, because it's really kind of affected it um, and it hasn't really changed or gone back to normal, whatever normal is. I don't really have a normal. Um, but I'm just moving through that now. Um, so anybody who is going through that, you know, um, I get you. Um, so that's kind of this week. I'm at work and then I've got my sister's wedding in uh, Glasgow uh, this coming weekend. And I'm singing at the wedding, which I'm really, really excited about. Obviously, big family events can be a little bit scary because, again, it's big kind of groups of people and you're kind of going into that kind of heteronormative space of a wedding and so forth. Um, she is marrying a man, um, a very, very lovely man. Um, so it's always a bit like, you know, so I'm kind of grounding myself and preparing for that. But uh, for the most part, I have a very lovely, accepting family. So I'm very, very lucky. And um, yeah, I just got work and I got my wonderful clients uh, this this week, uh, one this evening and one tomorrow. And I can't wait because they are so, so, so amazing. If you would like to have coaching from me, then come and check the links below. I would love to see you. Um, and if you want to hear more about my personal journey, then you can join our Patreon where I have a podcast where I go super deep into really, really scary stuff that I do not want to tell anyone, but I challenge myself. Um, and finally, if you would like to hear more about my personal story, then check out this playlist coming up or this video here. Thank you for listening. If you relate to anything that I say, I would love to hear and I will speak to you again soon. Have a great week. Bye for now.